Gaius is an obsessive, neckbeard loser who for some crazy reason decides to reincarnate as a young boy. Weird move bro, he thinks it will raise his level and increase his power. Yeah, cause being a kid does that. Psych, he now goes by Matthias. While heading to the capital with a merchant, his crest activates warning that an enemy is nearby. Just then an enormous tiger, a calamity-grade monster, appears but Matthias gives it a chop and they continue their journey. Once in the capital he enters a store. He overhears a cute adventurer begging the store owner to repair her broken sword as she needs it for an entrance exam. The storekeeper says that unfortunately he cannot repair it on his own and offers a ready-made sword. Still eavesdropping, Matthias interrupts and offers to cast the enchantment she needs. Dismissively, the storekeeper says Matthias' weak crest is incapable of sh**, but the girl accepts his offer. She then introduces herself as Alma the Pussy, yes, yes you heard that right, that's her name, and Mr. Reincarnation's full name is Matthias Haldesheimer. What in the old world Europe is going on? Anyway, she calls him Maddie and Lil Bro's cheeks light up like a Christmas tree. Just then, Lurie, Alma's friend, arrives, and Maddie almost wets his pants with excitement. Chill, homie. They share a weird, awkward moment of mutual cringe, and the embarrassment is palpable. That's when the storekeeper enters the waiting room with their repaired sword. Maddie immediately gets to work on enchanting it, and within a few seconds, he's all done. Minute Man magic activate. Lurie takes back her repaired sword, and without thinking, she slices straight through the wooden table they're sitting at. Whoops, enchantment achieved. The storekeeper is at first flabbergasted but immediately offers Maddie a job. He politely declines. He doesn't want to work for you, fool. Next, we see Matthias at school taking the magical entrance exams. His girl crush Lurie is there too along with Alma. Alma is overwhelmed with the difficulty but Lurie encourages them all, and while battling the examiner she slices his sword in half. Score, she thanks Matthias profusely for the enchantment. Next up for testing is Maddie, and surprisingly a knight awaits him. The whole capital has been buzzing over Lurie's overpowered sword and word got round that it was Matthias doing. The knight seems to know Matthias' father and in a show of nepotism says that if Maddie can kick his butt, he'll pass him no matter his other scores. And, they fight. Maddie is skilled AF and quickly disarms the knight who is also the captain of the knight's order. The onlookers are dumbfounded while Lurie and Alma turn into cheerleaders. In the next test, they have to use flame magic, and Lurie is a powerhouse. Matthias starts an internal monologue stating how shocked he is that people still use verbal incantations as these are not ideal in battle. Imagine saying a long spell out loud while someone's attacking you. Makes no freaking sense during combat. Maddie thinks non-verbal attacks are more powerful and more sensible. Anyway, Lurie passes with flying colors thanks to her Crest of Glory, which is a top-ranked crest, while Maddie's crest, the crest of failure is considered the weakest. Maddie knows all expect him to fail, and even the teacher underestimates his skill level. But Matthias is no punk, and he lights up the place with powerful magic. He uses nonverbal magic and makes such a big explosion that he destroys the entire practice field. Damn son. And just like that, Maddie and his girl crew are accepted to magic school. Here we meet Headmaster Edward. Edward welcomes the students and wishes them success in their studies stating that abilities mean more than lineage or crest. All peasants are welcome. After this short but sweet speech, Matthias is called into his office. Matthias is filled with anxiety and wonders if he'll be punished for destroying the practice area. Edward is aware of Matthias' overpowered actions, such as his wordless spells and effortlessly overpowering the captain of the knight's order. Edward is so impressed with Matthias that he asks him to teach teachers and students alike to use wordless magic. Matthias is more than willing to help, but there's a problem with regards to the Academy's sister school, the First Royal Academy. That school is endorsed by the nobility, and only their curriculum is allowed to be taught, which means wordless magic is outright banned in all other schools in the kingdom. Headmaster Edward says F them nobles, he needs Maddie to give a demo at the next inter-school competition, showing them all the power of non-verbal magic. Maddie agrees and all the onlookers in the office are overjoyed. As the days pass in magic school, Matthias has been promoted to special guest instructor. He does a special flying non-verbal fire attack and the students are stunned. Some even softly wonder if he's a demon. 
Then their teacher, Mr. Geisel, shows that he too can use nonverbal magic as his sword sends fireballs flying. He motivates the students that even though he is dunce at casting, Maddie could even teach his dumb bum, meaning everyone can learn this new skill. The students quickly pick up the technique, with Alma being a showstopper and how fast she learns their new method. She grunts like a Wimbledon level tennis player, though. Ha ha ha. Maddie checks on Lurie, who is slowly getting the hang of it until she runs out of mana. They wonder why nonverbal magic has been banned in the first place. Then Maddie asks for her hand, making her blush like a tomato in bloom. But no funny business, he just wants to transfer some magic to Lurie. With her power boosted, Lurie is now capable of nonverbal magic. A month later, and it's time for the interschool competition against the first Royal Academy. Lurie shares some deets with Maddie about the so-called magical chosen ones of the Royal First Academy. Apparently, these overpowered casters always steal the show from Second Academy anytime they're about to win. That's when Matthias Crest lights up and warns him that a person with ten times his magical power is nearby. This shocks the girls and they warn him that that is demon-level power. Apparently, demons cannot be beaten by mere humans. Several court magicians are needed as they are the natural enemies of humans. As Matthias enters the battlefield, he reminisces on how demons have survived even into this current era. Then he is spotted by some noble students from the first Royal Academy who trash talks and try to bully Matthias for his weak crest. We spot the headmaster of the Royal Academy, and he's just as much of a douche canoe as his students are. Arrogant and rude? That's when Matthias senses that his arrogant, loudmouth loser of an opponent is actually a demon. He is undercover, using a fake crest and magic to hide his true form. The fight begins, and some of the noble students run towards him, shouting out incantations looking absolutely ridiculous. Matthias instantly defeats them with wordless magic. The demon is angered and activates his spell before he even verbalizes a single word of magic. Matthias, of course, notices this immediately as does the watching crowd. Things are getting spicy. Matthias goes straight for the demon's head, knowing that that is their weak spot. The demon flies up dodging and diving, and the fight continues. Now Matthias understands why the world has changed. Matthias assumes the demons must have infiltrated the Royal Academy, that way ensuring the non-verbal and more powerful spells were abandoned. Smart way to keep human spells as weak as possible. Also, they must be behind declaring the fourth crest, the crest of failure to hide what it's really capable of. While he considers all this, the demon lunges for him. Matthias quickly uses a spell to break the demon's incognito mode and reveal his true form. Dude's name is Devilus, I mean that's flipping obvious. Devilus uses a fire blast which Matthias blocks easily. Matthias uses his big brain skill to expertly analyze Devilus's next move and strikes him without hesitation, bringing that big wing beauty down. Sayonara? This is when we get a flashback to Gaius's past and see he was a powerful sage who almost completely eradicated demon kind. We also get insight as to why Gaius used a reincarnation spell, and why thousands of years later he was reborn as a son of the Hildesheimer family. In a world that sees the strongest crest as the weakest and worst spell casting is in decline. Back to the present, Luri is overjoyed that Matthias defeats the demon. Afterwards, when Matthias learns that no one has been able to defeat a demon single-handedly in their entire history, his flabber is gasted. He is then awarded an audience with the king. The king is super impressed and proud like a daddy and wants to reward Matthias with land and sing his praises throughout the land. But Matthias doesn't want land and the king also prefers to keep this whole debacle private as otherwise it will become known that demons have infiltrated their ranks. Matthias just wants more power so the king offers him a magic sword with double enchantments instead. Matthias realizes this sword is the same one that he had enchanted for the storekeeper. Geez Louise, no thanks. The king notices Matthias' surprise at being offered a sword he himself has blessed, so he simply asks him what he wants. Cheekily, Maddie responds that he would like the rights to all resources found in the kingdom's dungeons. Matthias figures that the king is probably unaware of all the great treasures, monster parts and metals to be found in them. And he's correct as the king grants Matthias' wish. The king then informs Maddie that all the magical chosen ones of the kingdom have disappeared. They suspect them all to be demons and the king goes so far as to say that he suspects that demons have been infiltrating them for centuries. Matthias thinks back to his previous life as Gaius where he had nearly eliminated all demons. The king does wonder and hope that the demon threat is now over, 
But Maddie bursts his bubble and says, since the demons have been unmasked, their next move may be to muster all their forces and destroy the kingdom. The king is filled with fear and unsure of how to proceed. Lucky for him, Mathetus is a G. He knows exactly how long till the demons have summoned their forces and also just which moves to make to protect the entire kingdom. They are to form a magical barrier made by using divine artifacts. If everyone works together, they should be ready within a month. Plus, they should keep practicing non-verbal magic. The king appoints Matthias as leader of their fight. This leadership position also gives Matthias access to anything he may require, be it magical or not. Our man has clearance to all of the top secrets. While searching through the king's private collection, Matthias comes across several of his enchanted weapons made thousands of years ago. Talk about a blast from the past, a handmade magical overpowered sword, and a superpowered pendant that boosts battle gains. Meanwhile, Matthias keeps teaching the college students non-verbal magic. His fellow students were improving by the day and word had gotten out that Matthias was making a powerful barrier. He invites Alma and Luri to join his dungeon exploration party. They of course want to join but fear they may hold him back as they aren't as good as he is. He teaches Alma some super magical moves that can be made with arrows and Luri literally jumps at the offer to join him. She presses up against him begging him to teach her all he knows. Calm ya Tata's lady, it's getting obsessed. And so their dungeon dwelling party is formed and off they go to the dungeon underneath the very academy they attend school at. As Matthias and his crew walk through the dungeon's first floor, Maddie rushes off telling the girls to their utmost surprise that he'll find them a monster to fight. The girls are freaked but he quickly returns with a cute as pie little Pokemon looking thingy. He tells the girls to use it as target practice. Alma fills her arrow with magic. She infused her magical power straight into them and fires success. Alma is gleeful and Matthias gives her more tips and tricks. She follows his advice and fires away. The infused arrow changes course mid-flight and hits another monster who had been hiding. Brave Alma heads deeper into the dungeon to further practice all she has been taught. Luri feeling left out rushes up to Matthias asking when it's her turn for his special training. Easy now miss. Matthias tells her they need to do something else first, which is the starting point of all enchantments. Making your own weapons. I think he may need a weapon against her pushiness. As they walk, Matthias stops to destroy a wall with his magic. He explains that the entire dungeon is made up of valuable resources. Then he teaches Luri, and thus the process behind creating a basic weapon. Our boy is making alchemy moves. Luri is a fast learner, eager to impress her boy crush with her abilities. Go and girl. Next step is learning to enchant them. Meanwhile, Alma is becoming a boss in her own right with her magical arrows technique. She is able to defeat multiple monsters with a single attack. She heads back to the love birds and is stupefied at Luri's progression. Luri can make and enchant her own weapons. Matthias tells the girls to prepare themselves as he wants to reach the 10th floor of the dungeon. They hesitate but he believes in them and off they go. As they head deeper and deeper suddenly, several monsters appear. Luri and Alma stand their ground and defeat the monsters with ease. Still deeper they go as more and more monsters appear. But teamwork is the dream work and the girls support each other excellently. The party levels up quickly as the pendant from his previous life doubles their experience points. Just then, a three-eyed wolf appears. Matthias warns that this rabid-looking fellow is way more dangerous. The beast attacks and the girls defend and then fight back, overpowering it quickly. The QB surprise Matthias and he praises them. Matthias creates a safe zone for their camp so they can rest. While our girls rest, Matthias informs them that he will be continuing on alone to the 25th floor. Flustered, they warn Maddie that the deepest anyone has gone is the 23rd floor, and they were a party of 30 with protection of the legendary god of magic Gaius. Wait a second, is she talking about our main man in his previous life? Matthias is surprised, but he continues on alone into the deeper floors of the dungeon. He gathers the resources he finds, but then he senses a powerful monster, a dungeon floor boss. Wary but brave, he traces the energy. Goodness me, that's when he comes upon many red glowing-eyed monsters who attack simultaneously. He defeats them, and that's when the dungeon boss appears, a giant arc serpent. The giant serpent can melt the ground with its venom, and the toxic fumes poison the air, but Matthias has no fear. Finally a challenge, he thinks to himself. He employs his combat specialized crest against the dungeon boss. 
Matthias is enjoying himself, and he tries new and old techniques against the dungeon boss. He shatters a magic stone, and he combines it with his sword. Then he strikes the snake, and his overpowered attack causes an earthquake. This awakes the girls who get a fright, but they aren't the only ones. We see two demons who have also sensed the huge magical explosion in the dungeon. They wonder if it really happened as the demons know humans are pretty weak these days. Matthias returns to the 10th floor, and he proudly shows the girls the defeated dungeon boss's body. Later that day, Matthias and his crew visit the Adventurers Guild. The other adventurers give them the stink eye. Apparently, many students of the Second Magic Academy have been taking their quests since they've learnt non-verbal magic. Alma informs the cutie at the desk that they're there to offload their hard-earned loot. Maddie opens a portal and drops the head of the defeated dungeon boss at their feet. After much screaming, the receptionist learns that Matthias has a storage spell. She asks if he anything else to sell, and he pulls out a giant magic stone. Wide-eyed, the receptionist said the stone qualifies as a national treasure. Nonchalantly, Matthias says that this stone is still too small for his purposes. Worried, the receptionist doesn't think her guild can even afford to pay for all their loot. Afterwards, as our crew walks through the town, we learn they earned 750 gold coins as their reward. Maddie suggests they split it three ways. What a noble gesture, big homie. On their way back to the academy, Matthias suddenly senses the energy of demons and warns the girls it's best to return quickly. Then we see two buff ultra macho demons with six packs made by the gods. They figured out that a student of the academy has defeated their homeboy Devilus. Matthias is able to read their strength meters kinda like the scouters used by Frieza's army in DBZ. He tells the girls that he wants to battle the stronger demon and he wants them to battle the weaker one. They're as shocked as we are. Are you sure about this, Maddie? Matthias has a plan and he encourages the girls. This motivates them and off they go. While the demons are discussing their game plan mid-flight, Maddie pops up out of nowhere startling them. He immediately strikes at the strongest but his attack is repelled. The demons are in revenge mode and attack Matthias simultaneously. Luckily Matthias dodges a fire spell and he deflects it back to Lord Ashril. Impressed, he congratulates Matthias, but Maddie uses his big brain attack and casts more spells. Matthias uses strategy to lure the demons into a trap. That's when Alma starts firing arrows at them to disrupt magical power and slow them down. The two demons split up, which is exactly what Matthias wanted. Lord Ashril starts preparing a powerful spell to eliminate Matthias, but Matthias is still in big brain mode and uses a spirit ball to burst through the demon's attack. Now the demon is dodging Matthias as he greatly underestimated him. He attempts to slice and dice big homie, but every hit misses. Matthias counters and he injures the demon's back. Lord Ashril is stunned by Maddie's moves and rudely calls him a beast. Ha ha ha. After that, the demon tries to escape, but Maddie blocks him. Lord Ashril uses a hidden cast to try and trap Matthias. Matthias immediately avoids the attack and escapes. Lord Ashril does manage to destroy the spheres that were irritatingly shocking the crap out of him every time he tried to flee. Matthias shows himself to be a skilled swordmaster while fighting the demon. The demon gets mouthy but while chatting sh Maddie quickly casts a magic spell on the injured demon. Matthias watches the magic electrify the demon making it weaker, giving him the opportunity to easily defeat him. He eliminates him with ease. At the same time, Alma and Luri are fighting the weaker demon. They manage to injure him and Matthias joins the fray, preparing to eliminate demon number two. Matthias tricks the demon into believing he has a very powerful spell named Light of Euthanization that easily excommunicates demons. This scares the poop out the demon who tries to flee. Maddie instructs Alma to shoot him with her infused arrows. Alma manages to pop his wing off like it's a piece of KFC that she's about to chow on. This forces the demon to stop and that's the moment that Matthias attacks with a sword. The demon is euthanized effectively. Both demons are excommunicated. Matthias and his girl crew are champions. The battle draws a crowd. Matthias is in no mood for drama so he grabs the girls and up they go. He flies them right up out of there. The next day, Matthias and his girls are invited to appear before the king. He praises them and says to choose their reward. Matthias thinks for a second and asks for all of the dungeons. He wants them all, and the king grants it. Next up, Alma and Luri are asked the same. Both request money. You know sad girls love money? The king laughs at their gold diggery behavior and agrees. 
Out of nowhere, Matthias stands and shouts at the roof. Buddy comes across as a loony, but his magical senses are warning him that they are being spied on. The former captain of the Mage's Order, an undercover enemy demon, had been using magic to spy on the king. Matthias uses his own power to stop the demon's spell and injures him too. Edward, their principal, and the king were stunned at the knowledge. How long has the demon been watching them? Matthias lets them know that he'll be able to locate the demon's hideout. Matthias thinks it's a good idea to go pay them a visit, but the location of the hideout is about a year's travel. Matthias says even his teleportation magic will be useless in this situation which shocks the principal and the girls that Matthias can cast teleportation magic. Matthias comes up with a well-thought-out solution to their problem. It resides at the top of a mountain. Upon arrival, the girls are filled with fear and almost poop their pants at the sight of Matthias' solution. It's a thing of myth and legend, a giant dark dragon. Matthias and the dark dragon Ayers go way back. He had battled her and won more than a 1,000 years ago. Upon his entry into her cave, old girl immediately threatens him, telling him to hit the road or turn into a flaming sheet already for snacking. Matthias doesn't listen as he can't believe that Ayers doesn't recognize him. Ayers prepares a powerful fire attack against Matthias, but he quickly and easily negates it. This shocks Ayers so bad her voice changes from a deep rumble to a pip squeak. She sounds like a little girl. Flabbergasted, she asks if he used a disruption spell and how he speaks dragon. She wonders if he knows Gaius and Matthias replies that he is Gaius's reincarnation. Upon hearing this, Ayers immediately apologizes and begs for forgiveness. Matthias tells her to calm her tatas. He will not hurt her, in fact, he needs her help. He also informs Ayers that he now has the crest of failure. Matthias invites the girls to come and get to know the dragon that will be bringing them to Demon's Hideout. That's when Ayers tells him that her wings were destroyed in a massive apocalyptic event that sent humanity back to the Stone Ages, so she simply cannot fly. Matthias quickly heals her wings and she thanks him. He then asks her to keep his secret about being a reincarnated person and to speak English further so the girls can understand. Ayers is introduced to Alma and Luri who are stunned that a dragon can communicate in English. Our crew set off for their journey to the demon's lair. Ayers is so happy with her healed wings that she attempts to fly at her top speed. Matthias quickly stops her because none of them would be able to handle that speed. During this conversation, he also learns that he and his friends have been named gods of magic in the current humanity's timeline. The dragon is instructed to fly at 1 500th of the speed she was about to fly, and off they go. Next, we see the demon keeping watch at his lair, and just as he feels a funny feeling of being watched, Matthias springs up and fruit ninjas that demon like he's a tasty watermelon on a hot summer day. The girls and dragon watch in shock and are super happy that he is their homie and not their enemy. Matthias walks around observing the demon's lair. He can feel that there's another one of them hiding, an especially strong one. Right then, Ayers just crashes out of the sky into the building, knocking Alma and Luri out cold. They seem fine though. Matthias casts a Tulapathy spell on the three of them. He also gives Luri a magical casting circle and asks them both to prepare an offensive plan. Matthias encourages and motivates them, and they head deeper into the lair together. The lair is strangely empty, but Matthias senses a concealment spell that is not just hiding the demon but also masks any emissions of magical power. He asks the girls to sense if they feel any areas devoid of magic. Luri finds a spot, and that's where the demon is hiding. Matthias lets them know it's about to go down. He prepares a spell and has them stand by. Alma aims and fires away. The demon has no clue that they can see him and is stunned when Alma's arrow hits him right between the eyebrows. He starts babbling and then attacks Matty. He uses telepathy to inform Alma and Luri to prepare. Matthias blocks every attack while the demon keeps chatting shut and calling him a beast. The girls fire their arrows at him. The demon is quick with the comebacks and has an impressive array of insults. But insults cannot stop arrows. Then the arrows start doing their thing. The girlies used a special toxin on the arrowheads, and Luri's enchantment was exacerbating the effects, destroying the demon from inside. Devious, angered, our bumbling smack talker goes full Hulk mode showing his final form. This is the demon's trump card. The Hulkified demon turns to the girls. They run. The demon strikes but his fingers pass through their bodies. Unfortunately for Hulk, it's an illusion filled with toxic magic, and touching it unalives him. 
He stands dumbstruck as Alma fires another arrow between his eyes. Matthias is super proud of his two girls for their victory, like a father or reincarnated adult in the body of a teenage boy. Gross. He sends them to Iris. He stays to finish the other demon. Matty uses magic stones and crushes them into fine dust. This technique forces the fog demon to materialize. The demon is surprised by Matthias' abilities. He heard the other demon call Matty a beast, but he thinks he's a mother The demon tells Matthias to prepare to meet his maker and attacks, but Matthias fears no demon, even though the demon chops off his arm with his powerful wind sword. Matthias stands armless as the demon goads him. But while the demon chats shite, Matthias activates Big Brain and is analyzing Demon Dude's abilities. He quickly reattaches his arm like it's no big deal. I must admit there wasn't even a drop of red foam spilled so I was kinda suspicious. But okay, let's ignore logic. The demon strikes multiple times. Matty dodges them easily. Now it's his turn to play. He strikes the demon's hand and the demon assumes he's been poisoned. This angers Demon Dude. He attempts a spell that will turn him into an overpowered monster, but Matthias quickly nullifies it. As a last resort, the demon casts a fog spell that dissolves everything it touches. Matthias waves his hand and cancels that. He confidently informs the demon that he hasn't poisoned him. Instead, he put a spell on him that will eventually make him go boom. The demon pleads for his life, but Matty is no sucker. He blows him to kingdom come. The girls hear the explosion. Luri being the obsessed stalker, she is literally falls from the sky onto Maddie, expressing her worry and blushing like a crushed tomato. Maddie blushes too, weird moment. Alma interrupts the blushing fest and asks Maddie what the heck that giant purple crystal is, embedded in the ground beside him. Matthias says that it's a dragon dong sorry, a dragon vein pillar, which is kind of the same thing. It can do its magical power. Maddie states that the dragon vein is used to summon an army of monsters to attack the capital. Matthias knows that they can defeat the monsters, plus he's changed the location of their spawning point, giving the kingdom time to prepare. On their flight back, Iris asks Matthias if he still needs her. Maddie asks her to turn human and join them. That way his personalized uber dragon is always available for a quick ride. Iris loves the idea and does it, and there she is in the buff, big booty naked. Maddie says that's perfect. But the girls freak out and try to cover his eyes. Okay, blocky Yanas. Later that night, Maddie enters the principal's office and presents him with the horns of the slain demons. Edward is shocked that Matthias was able to travel around the world so quickly. I am more shocked that they're depending on a teenage boy. Matthias introduces Iris as an exchange student. Edward agrees to allow her but she'll have to pass their entrance exam. Maddie agrees under the prerequisite that he's allowed to watch her take it as Big Homie is kinda worried her dragon abilities will burn the whole place down. Matthias doesn't say a word about the monster horde or the dragon dong. He's just focused on Iris passing her exam. Get your priorities straight, yes, yeah, psycho. Early the next day, the written exam takes place and Iris is like a fish out of water. Sucks for her but hilarious for us. Everyone looks concerned, including the principal. But Matthias vouches for her and they continue. Next up is the practical skills exam led by the captain of the knights. They start fighting and we see how clumsy Iris is. She may be clumsy but she's strong AF. The knight tries to attack her but homegirl stops his attack barehanded. She even lifts him up by his sword in an alarming manner. Sir Guile is flabbergasted and cannot believe her strength. Iris tries a counterattack and just in time Matthias activates a barrier spell to protect Guile who is sent flying. Edward can't believe his eyes. Guile is defeated. Next is the casting exam. Iris concentrates hard to control her powerful magic but she fails dramatically and sends an explosive beam flying. Luckily, Matthias creates a barrier as there is an enormous explosion. Iris apologizes and tries again. She sends her beam high into the sky missing the targets completely but creating another gigantic explosion. Finally, Iris gets fed up and tries the technique that Maddie taught her. I must add with each blast the principal gets more and more freaked, asking if she's some kind of calamity grade monster. He has no idea. Iris lets off another blast and just in time Matthias employs an extra strong barrier for protection. And they need it. Iris destroys the entire field and shocks everyone with her fearsome power. She destroys half the school but she passes her exams. 
As the days continue, Matthias and the principal inspect the mining operation for their barrier. Edward says it's taking long because they need students with a stronger crest. Most of them are enrolled in the first academy, and the interschool rivalry makes this a prickly situation. He promises to ask the king for assistance. That afternoon, first Royal Academy's principal shows up as summoned by the king. He is pissed and refuses cooperation. Edward reminds the douche canoe that they are fighting demons. He also reminds the arrogant loser that they beat them at the last tournament. The other principal refuses to accept defeat claiming demonic interference. That old fool must have dementia as it was his demonic student. To calm things, Matthias offers a redo. The demented fool agrees but on the condition that neither Matthias nor his crew may enter. Matthias agrees and a date is set for a new tournament. On the appointed day all the students with the crest of glory from the first academy show up. It's a massive crowd. The other principal is as arrogant as ever. He gleefully insults the second academy and instructs his students to let their inner ass hats out. Then Matthias' classmates show up. There's five of them against the crowd. It begins, the second academy students all have lesser crests than those of first academy. But it's irrelevant as all first academy students are immediately defeated by nonverbal magic. First academy doesn't stand a chance in hell. They're blown to smithereens. It's a beautiful sight, but not for the demented principal who loses his sh**. He accuses the second academy of cheating. He foolishly demands that he gets to pick his student's opponent, and he chooses Iris. She's asleep snoring snot bubbles. Big mistake, buddy. Matthias gives her a sword for the fight. Just then, Iris accidentally bends the sword, and the other principal freaks. Edward confronts the demented principal and questions why his students still use verbal enchantments. The foolish headmaster says it's tradition. To hell with them and the king. Unluckily for him, the king overhears his demented babbles. The other students are sent to the second academy, where they learn nonverbal magic. Sometime later, our crew discuss what's still needed for the barrier. Matthias warns that they'll have to defeat an overpowered monster to collect an enormous magic stone. He looks at Iris and tells the others that her magic stone is more than adequate. This frightens Iris and the other girls, but Maddie promises not to take hers. Instead, they'll summon a monster. We see the girls have leveled up and are able to defeat high-level monsters easily. Iris is a different story, she barely has her vast powers under control. Funny enough, she almost beheads Matthias. The girls are super proud of themselves for defeating the monsters on the 17th floor, but Iris tells them of someone who made it to the 654th floor. Matthias realizes she must be talking about his past life. They head deeper to summon a more powerful monster by using a magic stone. Matthias asks Lurie to create a casting circle. It's quite difficult so Matthias kneels behind her she blushes when he touches her special place with his, I mean her crest with his, and this enables her to create a powerful magic circle. They blush some more. Matthias asks Iris to infuse some of her magic into the stone. He tells her to go slowly but Iris overdoes it. Matthias tries to stop her but she adds even more. Things are getting crazy now. He commands her to stop but it's too late and the dungeon starts to collapse. As they run away Matthias asks why she didn't listen. She says I'm a woman now and we don't listen, we just do. Plus, it's something I learned from previous life you, Matthias understands. Actions from his previous life are still affecting his present. That's when an enormous dragon appears. It has pecs that last for days. Muscular dragon Tata's woohoo. Matthias orders Iris to attack the dragon, but he blocks easily. Then Matthias tells Iris to hurt the dragon's feelings. Get real nasty. The dragon is an emo boy so he loses it. Lurie creates enchanted arrows for Alma to shoot. They have zero effect, but Matthias is preparing another strategy. That's when our emo dragon spots the two girls. They freeze and Iris quickly jumps to save them. Iris Mike Tyson's the emo dragon. One two punching him, but she gets distracted and Dragon Boy stomps her right through the ground. The dragon tries to activate fire breath, but Matthias blocks it with magic. The girls keep firing off arrows and Iris is back to using smack talk, hurting emo dragon's feelings. Then Matthias activates a powerful spell that's capable of eliminating the dragon instantly. The attack is successful. Iris comes rushing with the dragon's magic stone, and they return to the academy. Here they continue practicing in the destroyed training area. Matthias makes a training plan for Iris. She has to dodge Alma's arrows with a monster on her head. 
While Matthias starts teaching Luri new enchantment skills, Matthias wants her to apply eight different enchantments to his sword, giving him an ultra overpowered weapon. It's a lot, but Matthias is a good teacher. Now, Luri can create a sword filled up with enchantments. Matthias is as proud as ever. That's when Matthias asks Luri to make new weapons for the crew. All three girls test out their weapons. They are super overpowered and destroy boulders with ease. Some time later, Edward has assembled all the students and is laying out their plan for the upcoming monster horde attack. At Matthias' location, he gets a report of unusual demon activities. Matthias is busy preparing so he sends Alma and Lurie to see what's really good and stand on business. They agree and head deep into the forest. They spot a magical portal. Lurie remembers Maddie's advice. She's to continue using the special metal arrows, but this time the enchantments were up to her as each situation needs a different approach. Therefore, Luri confidently makes the arrows she thinks Alma will need. Then a demon pops from the portal, and before he can say what's good, Alma pops him in the chest, ending him quickly. No celebrating as another one pops up like a rice crispy in a bowl of freshly poured milk. Alma fires, but he doesn't go down. Before you can say snap, crackle and pop Luri slices demon dude from the skies. Night night, the portal closes quickly and the girls rejoice in their victory. Who runs the world? Girls, they do however feel a surge of magical energy and hurry back to Matthias. He explains that the demons are preparing for a second wave and asks the girls to buy him some time. As they exit, Iris shows up with a large load of mithril. We follow the girls back to the capital where Edward is waiting for them. He has a ton of magic stones piled up for Luri. As they speak suddenly a portal opens up above them and a cocky demon appears. The demon is surprised that a bunch of kids are waiting for him but shows no hesitation and immediately attacks with a powerful spell. He tries to blast them but the students create a barrier. This flabbers his gasted and demon bro is big mad. The students fight back, but he's out of range. Alma fires an arrow but he easily catches it. Luri is panting from exhaustion while enchanting her butt off. She asks the rest to buy her some time. Alma agrees, but the demon laughs while preparing another spell. He uses a fire spell, but it fails. Luri is struggling to make a weapon strong enough. Oh no! She only has one more magic stone left. The students hype her up and Luri overcomes her self-doubt and creates a thing of beauty. Alma fires, the arrogant demon dodges, but it's like a boomerang and it comes flying right back. Alma's attack severely injures the demon and the rest of the students simultaneously fire away. The demon falls from the sky, excommunicated. The students cheer, but another demon appears and he attacks with an irreconcilable power, blasting the children. Behind him several more demons appear and they surround the students. Luri is desperate, feeling all hope is lost. But Alma is no wimp and trusts that Matthias will save the day. From above the demons look down and plan a hunting competition. But like a true hero, Matthias shows up and gets to chopping, slicing and dicing. Call him the Gordon Ramsay of demon slayers. The demons sense his aura and know that he is the one that's been hunting their homies. Matthias starts ninja fruiting the remaining demons. He dispatches them in seconds. After the demon slaughter fest, Matthias informs them that the barrier is completed. Our crew join the others in the cave, and for the finishing touch, Maddie places the magic stone in the huge crystal. The crystal glows and sends a beam of magical energy upwards. Matthias' protective barrier now encases the entire capital. The girls think it's mission accomplished, but Matthias tells them they've only just begun. He reminds them that the dragon vein will be activated soon, so thousands of monsters will appear outside their town. Next, we see Edward and the students preparing for a monster hunt. The capital may be protected with a barrier, but the surrounding towns are pretty much screwed. We see a great cloud of dust forming as the horde of monsters appear. Luckily, Matthias has laid several magical booby traps to prevent the monsters from getting through, plus the students' support wipes out many. Then, another wave appears. Spicy. Our crew join the fray. Several large overpowered golem are part of the madness. Matthews being a giga chad just throws Iris headfirst into one of the goblin. She takes him down easily but is unimpressed with Matthew's rough treatment. It's hilarious. Alma beheads the next two golems single-handedly. Then our crew sense a strange yet powerful energy. It's known as the Void Eater. It gains its power from absorbing other monsters nearby. Cannibalistic. 
The girls want to fight it immediately, but Maddie with the big brain says it's best to let it absorb all the remaining monsters. He asks Lurie to carve an enchantment into a magic stone, and then to chuck it into the void. He explains his plan, but it's dull, so we'll skip that. They keep chucking things into the void, yes, for recycling. And it grows enormous. The Void Eater manifests into a great googly moogly beast. The girls are fearful, but Matthias is confident. He tells Alma and Luri to attack with arrows while Iris is to attack its feet. Matthias activates his crest of failure and also attacks. The poor beast makes a pitiful screech. I kind of pity it. Maddie's big brain moves are getting kind of boring, but luckily the beast can regenerate. Matthias keeps attacking. He crushes several little blue pills to invigorate his sword with power. This technique combined with several cast circles allow Matthias to bring the Void Eater to its knees. He then fruit ninjas the beast into bite-sized pieces. Assassination achieved. They praise each other for their great teamwork. The entire kingdom including the students and the king are overjoyed with their achievements.